to worship. I am standing here in the First Presbyterian Church in Washington, Kansas, greeting you today. Let us know you are here. Send a text, like the Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube page. We want to know who is joining us. This morning I invite you into worship with our psalm, Psalm 28, verses 1 through 3 and 7 through 8. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, do not refuse to hear me. For if you are silent to me, I shall be like those who go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication as I cry for your help, as I lift up my hands to your holy most sanctuary. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. So I am helped, and my heart exults. With my songs I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Friends, God's ears are tuned to hear our deepest need. Let us lift up our prayers to the Lord. You can find the prayers listed at the bottom of your bulletin. Please be sure you are sending them to us. We're glad to have them, and we want to know how we can be praying for you. Let us pray. Ever-living God, maker of this world, hear our prayers for this congregation, our community, and our world. Strengthen the faithful, bring hope to the hopeless, and bring comfort to those with sorrow in their hearts. We pray for our divided country. We ask that you give our leaders the wisdom and courage to act with empathy and mercy, just like you did for us. We pray for our own community. Make us, the church, instruments of your peace. May we be a people that sow love where there is hate and hope, where there is despair. We pray for our children, guardians, and teachers, and administrators who have returned to classrooms. We know that there are no easy answers. Even as our students settle into this strange and foreign experience, there is anxiety for the safety of our communities and of our children. Clashing voices and uncertainty surround us. God, we will be honest, this is really hard. We need your wisdom and your comfort. We need you to calm the storm. We know that you are working on this, but it is hard for us to see. Give us glimpses of what you are doing. Even though there is much despair, we trust in your unfailing love, and we will continue to rejoice in your goodness. As we head into this week, may you grant us all the things necessary for our everyday life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
invite you to take a moment to confess before the Lord by listening to the Psalm 32, verses 3 through 6. Close your eyes and just listen and reflect. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, to all the faithful, pray to you, while you may be found. Surely the rising of the waters will not reach them. You are invited to take a moment to silently pray your own words of confession this morning. Friends, since we are buried with Christ in these waters, we are raised to life with him. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today for our time with our children, I'd like to invite you to do something. I need you before we start to grab a piece of paper, some crayons, some paint brushes, whatever you would like. And I want you to take a moment to create something. Today I want to invite you to take your paint or your crayons or whatever it is you have and draw yourself the way you think God sees you. Not the way your friends see you or your parents see you, but what does it mean to be seen by God? Each of us is a piece of art fearfully and wonderfully made. Sometimes we forget that we are made beautiful by God. So what you're going to do is during the worship service, I want you to be painting and drawing that picture. Keep going. And then remember exactly what God has done. And take a moment at the end of the service to talk to your parents or your guardians and say, what is it easy for you to think about how God sees you? And how did it feel to paint the picture that way? And then I want you to talk with them about what does it mean to be loved by God? Before we jump into the service, will you take a moment to pray with me? Think about the things that you can be thankful for. Remember all the ways that God created you. Take time to thank God for your face, your body, your talents, your personality, all of what God created you to be. Lord, thank you so much that you created all of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture text today is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. For you, it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when it was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty! To me are your thoughts, O oh God, how vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Fearfully and wonderfully made. 
We are as people known by God. For some people, being known is a freeing feeling. See me, they say, look at me. They crave to be seen. And so the opening line of the psalm brings comfort and relief. For others, being known, though, is the scariest thing they experience. Being known means being laid bare. The good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak. To be seen is to be exposed, and that can be very terrifying. I imagine there are those of you who, as you read the words of this psalm, O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me, breathe easier. You breathe easier knowing that you are seen and that you are still loved. And at the same time, there are those of you who hear these words and cringe. Does God really look at me fully and know me? And if God knows me, what does God think of me? And if that wasn't enough, then was I really made by God? But here's the thing, the reason you are known is that God did indeed make you. And you are made fearfully and wonderfully. God knit you together in your mother's womb, intimately weaving together all that you are. This is a hands-on God, invested in your inmost being. There's beauty and there's complexity to this. You are fearfully made. The word fearful in Hebrew refers to giving reverence to and causing awe that points to God's glory. You are made in this way, fearfully pointing to who God is, pointing to God's glory in this beautiful and this wonderful way. The word wonderful is also something that is Unique in the Hebrew, it is repeated twice, which tells us that this isn't just wonderfully made. This is, you are wonderfully wonderful. It's wonderful stacked upon wonderful. You aren't just great. You are, as you are meant to be, made so completely that God delights in you. It's interesting when we think about this idea of wonderfully made, there are different ways we respond to this in our world. You know, we can see ourselves and those around us as so complete that we delight God. Or we can look and think, just as much as I want to be known, I don't want to be known because I'm kind of sure I'm not quite made right. We look around at those and around us and sometimes we say the same thing. We can celebrate a person's beauty or we can mourn a person's faults. There are times when we hear the blessing and embrace the truth that we are beautiful as we are. And then there are times when we feel less than and see others as less than. Think about it for a moment. Before you jump in and say, no, no, not me, just think. When you notice a child who's disabled, do you think what a beautiful child? Or is your first thought to think about what they are lacking and wonder how this happened? Do you look at the parents and congratulate them for creating such a wonderful gift for the world? Or do you pity them for all that they have lost? When you see a person of color, do you think about their beauty and their exquisite nature? Or do you think about whether or not you can trust them and do they come from the right place? Do you shy away from them because they're different? And when you think about a person wonderfully made, do you include those people who struggle with addiction and homelessness and look for how God is speaking in their life? Or do you look forward to the time when they can be free of those burdens? Or perhaps 
you do some of the other things we do with Wonderfully Made. Maybe you're like, I do, I see the beauty. I see so much of the beauty that I say, all people matter to God. All children, God's children have a place in the choir. We are the same, we are equal, look. But is this what Wonderfully Made really means? Is it so supposed to be something that normalizes us and creates sameness in us? What if it's about saying that we are loved and created by the same God? Not quite the same idea, right? Because it's the same God who creates us, but each of us being wholly made are distinct in who we are. We are different colors. We are different genders, shapes, sizes. We are diverse. That diversity can reflect God's glory as much as the individual is meant to do. I just got back from vacation and on this trip to the west side, I noticed how diverse God's country was. We passed valleys and badlands and mountains and pastures and everywhere we looked, the landscape changed and it spoke to God's glory. With every diverse setting, you realize more intently who God is. The steadiness of the cornfields, the grandness of the mountains, the calm, clean lakes. That diversity revealed the importance of God's beautifully distinct creation. That diversity reminded me that each and every life knit by God is purposely designed because that distinction speaks most loudly to God's glory. The diversity of God's creation reminds us of just how big and grand God really is. And so as people of God's glory who are known and wonderfully made, this should put a burden on our hearts. Honestly, it should challenge us. As I read it, I find more and more my own heart needs to adjust because it challenges my view of the world. I have to think, do I see a world that has been known by God as fearfully and wonderfully made distinct or do I try to make everything the same? And when someone tells me that they are hurting, do I hear their uniqueness or maybe have I really listened? My ears have perked up lately in ways that tells me that maybe I'm not quite understanding. Because I want to say all of God's creation matters. We are all loved. We are all wanted. But there's a part of this world that I cannot deny pushes back and says all of us matter, but perhaps there are some of those who matter less. It's not that I intentionally engage that story either. I do believe that all of us matter, but that story is subtle. It's not that I'm standing at the doors of the church and sorting you out. You matter and you don't, and you matter and you don't. You all belong. We are all loved. We are all wanted. But that story is subtle in our life and in our culture and in our community. So subtle that we don't always realize when there are stacks and values placed on people and when those values create a more important and less important. The truth is that God didn't create this world to be the same. God created this world to reflect God. That is what's beautiful, and that is what deserves to be valued. And if at any point we fail to see that diversity, to allow ourselves and others to be known, if at any point someone tells us they have not experienced a sense of value, we may have to admit that we have failed. We have failed to see the beauty that God has created. And at that point, we need to be willing to say we are wrong. We need to be willing to ask for forgiveness. It's important that we see how the world is stacked to value some over others. And as Christians,
Christians, it's important to speak back against that. Because as Christians, we are meant to see the people God created and say, you are wanted, you are loved, you are made by God. No matter what your life looks like, no matter how you've been made, no matter what your position is in this world, you are wanted, not for who you can be, but for who you are. As Christians, it's our responsibility to say that. So consider what does it mean to think about others as fearfully and wonderfully made. Think about what it means to be truly known and still love them. This world we live in is vast and it is full of possibility. It is distinctly beautiful. Let us live into that beauty fully and completely in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we are people who are fearfully and wonderfully made. We ask that you call us out from this space and into the world so that we can work and we can do all that you have called and asked us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. As we receive our morning offering this time, remember that God has made each of us for love. All the people that God has placed in our lives, all the way that God has called us to love. Offering is one way to respond to that call and live into that truth that God has created all and that we are wonderfully made.